Welcome back to our uh, lectures on the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Lecture two is going to go a little bit deeper into some of the, uh, the themes that we introduced in the first uh, lecture on the Catechism. Just to summarize again, the Catechism is a new document, a new huge book that was published in the mid-90s to help Catholics um, uh, understand more clearly what their faith teaches. Um, lecture two is going to follow um, a couple of uh, documents written by the man who edited the catechism. His name was Cardinal Christoph Schoenborn of Vienna, and he was chosen by John Paul II and Cardinal Ratzinger to be the editor. Now, what does this mean, being the editor of the cate catechism of the Catholic Church? It sounds like he wrote the whole book, but actually, it means something different. Um, the catechism was written, um, different parts were assigned to bishops from around the world. And um, then it was Cardinal Schoenborn's job to take each part and look it over and kind of fit them all together. So he would take things that one bishop had developed and something that another bishop developed and he would put them all together. So he, uh, he uh, kind of made it all fit together. So when he discusses major themes and underlying principles of the catechism, um, we can be pretty sure that we have um, a trusted expert who knows the themes because he uh, was charged with the job of putting all the different themes together. And so this is going to be the first thing we look at. And then uh, later in the lecture, we'll look at um, just a few notes that he had about the four parts of the catechism. So the major themes and principles. Uh, according to Cardinal Schoenborn. Uh, the first theme that he discusses is something that he calls the hierarchy of the truth. Uh, this is um, uh, basically the principle is that some things in the Catholic faith are more important than others. For instance, it is more important for a Catholic to believe that Jesus Christ is God than for a Catholic to believe that you need to be at Mass on time every Sunday. <laughs> Even though this flows from the first, the more fundamental belief is that Jesus is God. So there were uh, three things that Cardinal Schoenborn identified in the hierarchy of the truth. The first is the mystery of the Blessed Trinity. Um, in order to be a, a Christian of any sort and to be a Catholic in any coherent way, it is essential to believe in the Trinity, that God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In fact, the master's program that I'm taking uh, through Holy Apostles begins with a course on the Trinity, because without a belief in the Trinity, one is not even a Christian. One could be a Jew, one could be a Muslim, or a Buddhist, or a uh, Hindu, but not a Christian without a belief in the Trinity. So this is very, very important, that there are three persons and one God. Another point uh, flowing from that is the mystery of Christ that Christ uh, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven and uh, founded the church. So the mystery of the incarnation is a, a very, very fundamental truth around which the catechism is organized. And then a third basic truth that Cardinal Schoenborn identifies as a theme um, is the message of the four-point plan itself, which, which we talked about in the, um, the first part. The creed was a really the cornerstone of this because it focuses on the existence of God. Um, as Cardinal Schoenborn puts it, um, in the catechism, it's important that God is first and grace is first. So the media, again, had it wrong when they were looking to see if the church had changed its position on abortion and birth control. This is not the way to understand the Catholic faith. Indeed, there are many non-Christian religions which have the same uh, prohibitions and teachings in the moral law, but it would be absurd to call a Muslim a Catholic or to call a Mormon a Catholic, even though maybe all three religions have large families and prohibit certain types of behavior. So it's very important to recall as you're reading the catechism that the Trinity 
the incarnation, and the fact that God is first and his grace is first is something that it, that is the way that the church intended us to read the catechism. Um, a second thing that Cardinal Schoenborn talks about is what he calls the unity of the church's message in time and space. And what this means is that, um, as I mentioned before, the fact that the catechism refers to something beyond Vatican II, even though it is a catechism of Vatican II, is very significant. It means that the catechism refers to the teachings of the church throughout time, which is, is a witness to the fact that Jesus has taught us essentially the same truths from the time that he walked on the earth to the present time and, on so, and so on and so on until the end of the world. And so um, statements about what the church believes are, um, are dogmatic and not just historical. This means that we can say that the church teaches this throughout time and um, not just in the present time. And again, the key there is to focus on the hierarchy of truth. Of course, people get confused when they may see that the church's practices, perhaps a discipline on the Friday fast has changed, and they get confused and they wonder if that means that we still believe in three persons and one God. Well, of course we do, because that is an essential teaching of the church. So. Um, just remember that as you read the catechism and as you teach it, that the, uh, the, 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 the catechism teaches the truth that Jesus has taught throughout time. And it teaches, um, it teaches the, the basic fundamental beliefs and then puts the practices of the church in context. So, um, in presenting the faith, what this means is that according to uh, the principle of the hierarchy of truth, the more important truths will be presented first and the more specific but less important things will be presented second. Uh, for example, when we talk about the moral life in part three, the first thing, the most important thing is the first part of that section describes what the moral life is. So it's important to read and understand that thoroughly before you attempt, presume, uh, whatever, to read uh, maybe something on the fifth commandment and tell everyone what the church teaches and does not teach about killing. So it's important to have the basic truths of Christianity understood before trying to interpret all the details. Um, another point that Cardinal Schoenborn focuses on is something that he calls realism in presenting the content of the faith. We would like to uh, focus on experience. A lot of people get lost in their own experience these days, but that's not, um, that's not healthy and it's not realistic. Cardinal Schoenborn discusses an antipathy, meaning a, um, a distaste to presenting doctrine that was um, evident in modern catechisms. It was feared that the question and answer books were, uh, were scaring people, were not giving them a, a clear image of God. Um, this is not the case, though. Um, in part one, I talked about Cardinal Ratzinger and um, his... Uh, belief was that the uh, context of society and of modern philosophy was skewing people's understanding of their faith. So, but this, this uh, problem of the loss of faith over time, especially in a, um, the 20th century, which had seen world wars, communistic atheism, um, secular humanism in the West, of course, there was an understandable um, worry about how people would accept their faith. But again, um, Cardinal Schoenborn agrees with Cardinal Ratzinger that we cannot be relativists 
I cannot rely on my experience of Jesus and you cannot rely on your experience of Jesus because we're two different people. We cannot rely on that to give us a complete picture of the truth. Therefore, there's a need of, for doctrine. And fortunately, there has been doctrine from the very beginning. And the catechism is a project of assembling and presenting sound doctrine that the church has accepted throughout the ages. In the West, we're very influenced by a philosopher of religion named William James. He was an American um, from a very, uh, very accomplished family. His brother was the novelist Henry James. William James tried to synthesize religion and psychology. He distinguished between religion of healthy-mindedness and unhealthy forms of religion. Perhaps that's useful in determining whether someone has gone off and joined a cult, but it's not a complete view of religious experience. In fact, the problem with William James is that, and his ideas, is that he's assuming that the experience, perhaps he's assuming, I don't know. He's assuming that religious experience is the end of the story. Again, uh, uh, the Catholic Church has always taught that the, uh, the fact of uh, the incarnation, the event of the incarnation, the um, existence of the Blessed Trinity, these are fundamental facts that exist whether we experience them or not. This was very, very uh, poignantly and dramatically demonstrated in the life of Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta. After Mother Teresa died, we learned from her diaries and from conversations with her spiritual director that there were years of spiritual thirst that she endured when she had absolutely no consolation from God, no religious experiences. A man such as William James or most Americans, uh, most, most people you will meet in your parish work would consider this a very unhealthy um, state of mind. Um, how could Mother Teresa possibly walk around and not, not feel the love of God? However, it is clear to the world from the work that she did that she had a very authentic religious life and that her love for God and her apprehension of the fact of God's existence and of the meaning of Jesus' incarnation was very real. Now, this does not mean that if you accept the faith that you will experience years of spiritual doubt and thirst and so on. What it does illustrate is that God gave us an heroic example to prove to us that our faith is not a matter of feelings. And this is a point that Cardinal Schoenborn wished to make and that, uh, that is very, um, very, very important. That if we get lost in the experience of our faith, there may be some very difficult times when we're not experiencing consolation and when we might be tempted to the modern temptations of atheism um, or of doubt. Um, or certainly in this multicultural world now, there are many different religious options. And certainly, if we were to rely on our sensory experience and we cannot see Jesus in front of us, what would we do? Would we become would we become a Hindu or some other creed simply because we cannot see, feel, and experience Jesus every day as we want to? Well, the answer is no. So anyway, this is a brief, um, just a brief uh, introduction to what Cardinal Schoenborn saw as major themes. Second, Cardinal Schoenborn authored a very short article on the content of the catechism himself. And again, the main idea here was that the catechism was going to emphasize God and his deeds. And this means the creed and the sacraments. Now, um, a, a theme is emerging here through all these different, uh, all these different uh, essays and, and, and things that we're bringing up. If the, the emphasis is on God and his deeds, then that means that 
um, the catechism is really meant to bring us face to face with God. It's no longer a matter of a concept. It's no matter a longer of no matter a, no longer a matter of what separates Catholics from Protestants or, or what is what is this teaching or what is that teaching. It's not a legalistic document. Um, Pope Benedict's first book as Pope, no surprise, was one called Jesus of Nazareth. His first encyclical is called God is Love. The project of Pope Benedict, uh, which continues the project of Pope John Paul, and indeed the project of the Second Vatican Council, is to bring us back in touch with reality. It is to take us out of the realm of our ideals and our, our concepts and bring us back face to face with the world around us that God created and God himself, especially through the person of Jesus and through his action in the Catholic Church. Because, um, because the project is to uh, reconnect us with Jesus, then the actual page length of the catechism um, there's more material in this catechism on the creed and sacraments than there is on the Ten Commandments and prayer. Um, and this may surprise people because um, to many people that you will teach in your courses or the people that you meet, they believe that the Catholic faith is simply a, a moral uh, program, um, a Ten Commandments kind of faith. Um, and a certain set of prayers that we say. And yes, that's a very important part of the faith, but it's not, the, uh, the, it's not that from which the faith flows, which is the existence of God. So um, again, the, uh, the hierarchy of the truth is reflected in the structure of each part as we said before, and it discusses the general and the particular, and this will hold true through every part. Now, a few, uh, a few notes on some other things that the church has done um, since the catechism has been published. In each uh, country, including the United States, the Conference of Catholic Bishops have been charged with the responsibility of uh, making sure that teaching documents are in conformity with the catechism of the Catholic Church. This means that catechetical text used in um, grammar schools and in RCIA programs and so on um, must be submitted um, to the Conference of Bishops in each country uh, so that reviewers decide if they are in conformity with the catechism of the Catholic Church. Um, therefore, if um, if a doctrine is misrepresented, or if um, someone teaches the Arian heresy um, in new form, or deviates from the church's teaching in some way, the catechism now provides um, the bishops in each country with a yardstick against which to measure all the teaching documents. So that has been a great blessing for the church. Those of us who might be, um, just a little old and old enough to remember um, some of the religion books that we had before, knew that they were really um, hit or miss in the time before the um, new catechism was published. Having taught catechism before and after um, the time when this review process was initiated, I can assure you that the books are much more reliable because of the existence of the catechism. Um, the second important thing is that the, the USCCB has just published a, um, uh, I guess you'd call it a national catechism. It's a derivative catechism, which is now being used in RCIA classes. Um, and it is not in question and answer form, but it is uh, kind of a shortened version of the main catechism that's adapted to American um, problems and issues. And so, you know, it will probably have a greater emphasis on materialism than the universal catechism. It will address problems that Americans face when dealing with their faith. 
And this document came out within the last uh, two years, 2005, 2006. And again, this is something to please be aware of if you're going to be um, working in parishes and so on. And this document has, um, has reading material and then at, each, at the end of each section, it has um, discussion questions, which are very good. Again, um, don't rely on it 100% because um, people's concerns are not just going to be American Catholic concerns. They will have universal questions, which you can only answer if you dig through the main documents. If you dig through the catechism and look up the long explanation, um, and if you, sometimes you may need to go to the companion of the catechism of the Catholic Church and for one of those hard questions about um, contraception or something, you may need to look up an entire passage which the uh, authors of the catechism used to um, footnote their teaching. And so there are many ways that this, uh, this wonderful um, system of catechism documents can be used to assist you in teaching the faith. Um, also, the, uh, the compendium of the catechism is worth mentioning for your catechetical work. Um, I briefly mentioned before that it's the kind of thing that you could, um, you could use, actually Cardinal Ratzinger, or Pope Benedict recommended that it might even be used as a textbook itself. It's certainly appropriate for uh, middle and high school um, drill so that they, so that people understand the content of the faith. Who is God? God is all, all perfect being, um, who has always existed. He's omnipotent. It provides us with a way of memorizing and understanding the content of the faith. Do not be afraid of this method. We use this in every other subject. We use it in uh, business, foreign languages, literature, mathematics, if you don't understand the content, you can never ask the question, why? So do not be afraid of a question and answer catechism because that is a foundational way of learning and it's something that can be supplemented as, as faith begins to grow. So um, please uh, be aware of these documents that uh, have come out since. Another document worth mentioning briefly is something called the Compendium of the Social Doctrine of the Catholic Church. And this is an important um, document that the church issued um, in the uh, 21st century. And it's, it's extremely significant um, during the time of globalization because issues about how to organize society have become very critical and in some ways have become a threat to the existence of the church. So I encourage you to be aware of that as well and to, um, to consider reading it. Of course, uh, these lectures have not um, attempted the impossible task of explaining exactly what the catechism teaches. Um, trying to explain that in an hour would be impossible. But uh, the coursework for this class will, will take you into the catechism itself. The certificate class will, um, or the, the certificate program actually presents Catholic doctrine. This class is intended to teach you how to read the catechism and how to use it. Um, so coursework for this will include an essay exam. It will include uh, reading and um, and quizzes and other assessments that will, um, that will give you confidence in knowing that, um, that using the introduction of the catechism as we have in these lectures, that you are fully equipped to understand it and that you are fully equipped to teach it. And we will develop these skills in the assessments and exercises and the readings that will be assigned for this course. Thank you very much.